So we've talked about the past, well, we've talked about the present, we've talked about now. I'm kind of of the mind that time isn't chronological ordered, uh, but I suppose we, we need to talk about the future. You know, I mean, we're filming now with untold cameras. It's taken four hours. You know, there's a VR camera. I know you've had experiences like this in the past where the VR camera hasn't worked properly. So we can't, we, we can't even guarantee this is going to work. <laughs> but it, isn't that part of the fun a little bit? You, you know, and also the huge frustration is that, you know, people love to run before they can walk. What do you think will be one of the first benefits of VR when it comes to society at large or the entertainment industry or whatever sector you wish to comment on what are going to be the early wins for VR well I mean the interesting thing with VR is that the media approach was that it was going to be entertainment and it was going to be gaming it was going to be film and um, with the reality ironically um, was <laughs> th was that um, training and education and the things that are less sexy to talk about were the, th were the places, the bedrock of where it's most successful. So for example, I would quote the statistic that I can't remember, <laughs> but anyway, it's a high statistic, um, is that the thing that you most remember is personal experience. Yep. Now, if you've read a book, if you've watched TV, if you've um, you've been told something by someone else, they have, they have higher and higher retention rates. However, if you personally experienced something, you are far more likely to retain that. So if you put a VR headset on and you see something before you, around you, and you immerse yourself in it, you don't think, you know, your memory isn't of seeing those things, it's of being there. So you retain so much more. So for training, it's absolutely essential. No. It already is essential for education, similarly. Um, also for the design and technology and, and engineering sector, it's already an essential tool. Right, okay. Again, it's not sexy. Um, no, so, well, I mean, so, no, the reason I asked it, because I, I don't hear enough about the boring stories. Yeah, but let's bring sexy back into it again. Um, so from one, one extreme, the adult entertainment industry is, is one thing, but so that's really bringing sexy into it. Um, but that's, again, that's not, it's not a media piece. It's not a media headline. Um, now, what we're doing here is, is, is shooting this in, in VR because what I particularly wanted to do is have some evergreen content right. that you know, no matter whether someone thinks that it's interesting or not, it, the fact that it will exist in decades to come as if you were in this room with us, um, that's not possible in any other medium. Yeah. Now, if you were to think about captured moments, so with relatives that are no longer with us, or those times when your kids are growing up, you know, if you had the opportunity to put that headset on and you know, my daughter was in front of me, three years old, it's, it's one of those, so if you ask someone the question, would you spend time with someone? And your answer is, you know, if your answer is no, then you need to rethink that question because I cannot think of a reason not to do that. Um, in much the same way as, you, you know, we've, we've got this, this as a captured moment, to be able to drop yourself in, you know, for instance, the, 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 the conversation format, for example, um, to have sat there with, with Muhammad Ali, to have sat there with Robin Williams, to have sat there with, with, with the people that, uh, his, a part of history, you know, and, and that's, that's on a grand scale. But if you're thinking personal memories, you know, that bring, that's your personal history. So for you to view in, in VR, you don't, again, you lose yourself in that environment. Um, so that is very, very powerful. Yeah, it's like um, the sound of one hand clapping. Yeah, right, in the it's forest. not about a chat room full of avatars. It's not about a racing game. It's it's yeah. it's the ultimate personal level. Yeah, that's very interesting. I hadn't thought about that. Isn't it a bit tricky? Because I mean, this could go off in different ways, right? You go back in time and you see Muhammad Ali and Bob Dylan having a cigarette after a gig. You know, it it blows my brain, <laughs> left and right sides, active or inactive. But it doesn't seem to worry you. It seems to be something that excites you, all of this type of thing. Are you, I mean, are you such, 
a hobbyist here and an advocate and an evangelist that this is something that you just love doing? Well, more so than in, in any other environment. So as a creative, what you, you know, you, naturally as, as a rebellious creative, you don't want boundaries, you don't want restrictions. Yeah. Um, so a virtual environment um, is something that is, is immensely appealing because you're, you're not bound by something unless you then start to set rules within that environment. Um, so that is fascinating. Um, the ability to, as we say, what we've talked about is the past, but if you, if you then present the future um, and take it, and, you know, it's entirely believable. <laughs> so when I was in VR for the first 24 hours, actually, I was, I was, I, what I wanted to do, one of the things I really wanted to do was put on a headset and fall asleep and wake up in VR. Yeah, right. Um, because the, one of the issues with putting on a piece of plastic on the front of your face is that you know that you're going into VR. No matter how convincing the content is, you've got to go through the theatre of putting something on. Um, so if you wake up in VR, you don't think about the, the going in, the, that stepping through the doorway. You just believe everything that's in front of you. So if it's dinosaurs, if it's spaceships, you just think, whoa, dinosaurs and spaceships. You don't think but how I well rendered how, they are. <laughs> but I wonder how your brain would work like that if you did fall asleep in VR. I mean, well, I can tell you, I did it. <laughs> yeah, but, but what, what happened then? What, what happened? I just completely believed what was in front of me. As soon as you woke up? As soon as I woke up, yeah. You see, that, yeah, that does my head in because Whenever I've done it, and certainly not for 24 hours, and I know that I've got these on my face, and then I take them off, I'm so discombobulated <laughs> as if I've just got off a three-hour, three-day boat journey. You know what I mean? I really don't like the way I feel no. when, when I, let's just say, wake up in the real world after I take off the, the goggles. I mean, but you sound to me like you love it. No, but this, but this is just the point. So what I love is the, the experience, the short, sharp shock of, right. of the immersion. So, you know, spending five minutes in an amazing environment is far more beneficial than spending an hour in something that's just engrossing you because you happen to be there. So this, you know, for, for, for all its sins and, and Facebook now becoming meta, you know, I, I, would, I would ask an audience, you know, are you a meta offsetter? Sounds like a bit of a... Bit of a, a meta bit of, bit of a bit of a hashtag emerging there, but you know, rather than simply accepting, so rather than simply listening to the Scobles and everybody else in the world saying this is how it's going to be, this is what you're going to do, the book is still here, theatre is still here, TV is still here. They weren't replaced by something else. So this is not the future. It's a future. It's a, a future <laughs> technology platform. When you're outside, what are you contributing? What are you doing? So that moment of, of lacking in clarity and, and discombobulation, you know, that's because you've just, it should be that you've just come out and you're either inspired or you want to do something else or, you know, want to experience and appreciate the real world. I agree. I am all over theatre, cinema, less, not such a good example, really, because it's more, um, you know, textual books. I'm not so sure that of our generation, yes, we still will have theatre, we still will have football, we still will have um, books. I'm not so, sh so sure about younger people, because what is, what's a younger person going to think about you? You know, who's this, you know, what do they call it, a Ken? Is it Karen and Ken? <laughs> no disrespect, Ken. Um, but who's this Ken going off into the metaverse telling me what to think? I've been, I've been brought up in this world for the last 15 years. Who's, who's, who's this guy? What does he know? Well, he's, he's a storyteller. So what the world needs more of are good storytellers. Um, because if you're simply following a line of evolution, whether that be human or technological, then you're not being actually off, you're not being given enough options along the way. Yeah. So if you're not simply being told by Ken, this is what you should do, this is what you shouldn't do. Right, okay. But you're being talked with about why you, yeah, okay. you can or can't or should or shouldn't do something. That's a far greater bonus than simply being told no and wanting to rebel and, and do yes. On that note, I think, positive note, we'll end it there. 
Thank you very much, Dean. Thanks, Monty. You've made me think, which <laughs> is either good or bad. <laughs> Thank you.